Hello, friends, and thanks for joining me this week. My name is Laura Adams. I'm a personal finance expert and author who's been hosting the Money Girl podcast since 2008. If you're building a business or you want to earn more income, I hope you'll grab a copy of my recent book called Money Smart Solopreneur, a personal finance system for freelancers, entrepreneurs, and side hustlers. It was a number one Amazon new release, and it's available everywhere books are sold as a paperback, ebook, or audiobook. If you're enjoying Money Girl, subscribe, submit a rating, and participate by sending me your money questions or comments. You can leave a message 24 7 on our voicemail line by calling 302 364 0308. You can email me using my contact page at lauradadams.com or connect on Instagram at Laura D. Adams. My mission for Money Girl is to help you get the knowledge and motivation to prioritize your finances, build wealth, and have more security and less stress. Today's show was inspired by a listener question. It came from Kelly M., who says, I've received several offers for 0% balance transfer credit cards, but I'm not sure exactly how they work. Can you explain whether I should transfer my debt from a card charging 18.99% interest? Well, thanks for your great question, Kelly. I've done several podcasts on balance transfer cards, which are fantastic debt management tools when used properly. If you wanna dive a little deeper into the topic, don't miss podcast number 486 called The Ultimate Guide to Using a Balance Transfer Credit Card and podcast number 653 called Should You Transfer Balances to No Interest Credit Cards Multiple Times. And today, to chat about best practices for using balance transfers, I interviewed Mary Gamang, MBA and credit card specialist for Citizens. Mary and I had a great conversation about credit card debt and how to use a balance transfer to your advantage. And at the end of the show, I'll circle back to Kelly's question. So here are a few of the topics that Mary and I cover on this week's show. We talk about how many Americans have credit card debt and how much. What are the steps to create a debt payoff plan? We talk about ways that using a balance transfer card can improve your finances in multiple ways. We cover how card issuers evaluate you when you're applying for a transfer card and whether using a transferred card can hurt your credit. This is a common question that both Mary and I get. And we cover smart shopping tips for finding the best balance transfer credit card offer. Okay, here's my interview with Mary. Mary, I am so excited to have you on the Money Girl podcast. Thank you for joining me. Thank you for having me. Mary, this is an interesting time for a lot of people who are struggling with credit card debt. You know, I I think it's it's a situation that a lot of people don't like to face. They don't want to think about credit card debt. But I really want to get your expert advice. You know, as a credit card specialist, tell me a little bit about what's going on in the landscape of credit cards right now. How many Americans have it and what's a typical amount? That's a great question, Laura. Um, So we've seen from our research that from mycreditsummit.com that Due to the pandemic, there was actually a decrease in uh, credit card debt in 2020. But as things are opening up, people are getting back out there. Um, we're seeing that on the rise again. So about 54% of U.S. adults carry credit card debt. And the average balance per household is about $5,525. But that can also range upward to about $8,700. So anyone out there struggling is, is not alone. Yeah, I think those numbers should help people feel a little bit better about debt. And, you know, it doesn't mean that it's okay to keep it. It it still means you, you need to be proactive to try to get it paid down or even eliminated if at all possible. And this is a really important time to think about debt because as interest rates are rising, that also is going to affect credit card rates. I don't know if a lot of people understand that credit card interest rates are variable. So they're going to move as interest rates move. And that means carrying credit card debt is going to become more expensive if interest rates continue to rise. So this is the perfect time to really get serious, you know, create a plan for paying off debt. So what should a credit card holder or borrower do if they are struggling right now to pay off debt? How should they even think about approaching this and creating a plan? 
figuring out what your strategy is for yourself really starts with um, sitting down and getting a full picture of what your um, debts are. So I would suggest that the first thing that anyone should do who's struggling with debt is to um, make a list of all their debts. So write down the name of your accounts, your remaining balance um, and interest rates, the minimum payment, and when that payment is due. I really think of this as like a five-step approach to how to figure out your credit card debt payoff strategy. So the second step would be calculating your max repayment. And basically that just means look at how much you have left in your budget that you could use to pay off any debt that you have. So take your income, subtract your monthly expenses, which could be your mortgage, rent, utilities, groceries, and then also subtract all your minimum payments that you saw in that step one. And then you'll know that the remainder is what you can use to pay towards your high interest debt. Okay, that's awesome. So list out everything, then figure out what's the maximum amount that you can pay each month. I like that. So, all right, keep going. What's uh, What should we do next? Yeah, absolutely. So go back to that list that you created in step one, and then look at it and prioritize your accounts by how much interest that you're paying on it. So we want to highlight those high interest accounts. Yeah, Mary, I always encourage folks to tackle the highest interest rate debts first. That way, you know, as you're paying them off, you're going to be saving the most money. We're up to step three. Talk to me about four and five. (laughs) So, yeah, let's take a a look at step four. And that's really looking at how can you consolidate your payments? And there are a few options there. So I'm actually going to start with one option, a balance transfer card. This can help you consolidate all that debt that you saw in step one into one payment and make your life easier because all you have to do is keep track of one bill per month and one interest rate. Um, And the beauty of that is that some cards actually have a low introductory APR offer from when you sign up. So for example, our Citizens Clear Value MasterCard has an intro APR offer on balance transfers for 18 billing cycles. Uh, So that means that you could have a low intro APR while also paying off your debt. Yeah. Okay. That makes a lot of sense. And I have definitely taken advantage of balance transfer offers before. And I do think it's a really wise way. I mean, it doesn't make your debt disappear, but it definitely makes it a lot less expensive for, you know, a nice period of time. 18 months is, you know, that's a great amount of time for you to get those savings and those savings can help you even pay off your debt faster. Absolutely. And one thing I I mentioned to people when they think about a balance transfer credit card is also taking a look at, you know, the set period for that intro offer, like you just mentioned, 18 months is is a great amount of time, but uh, making sure that you can keep up with payments within that time and possibly even paying off your debt within that time can save uh, people a lot of money. Yeah, absolutely. All right. You mentioned maybe another consolidation method. Absolutely. So another option is actually a home equity line of credit. You have to keep in mind, though, with a home equity line of credit that it uses your home as collateral. So when you take a look at your options, just make sure that you're confident that you can keep up with that repayment plan before opening a home equity line of credit. Yeah. So for our homeowners out there, you may have seen a nice increase in equity lately as prices have gone up across the U.S. And so if you do have a, a, a loan-to-value ratio that, you know, isn't too high, you typically can qualify for a home equity line of credit. And, you know, the idea is that you're taking a loan at a much lower interest rate than your credit card. But as Mary mentioned, you know, the downside is that, yes, you are increasing the amount that you owe on your home, you know, using your home as collateral. So that's something that you definitely want to, you know, don't want to take that lightly. But if you've got a good bit of equity in your home, it can be a really inexpensive way to get rid of high interest debt and sort of clear out the credit cards. And you just want to make sure that you don't rack up those credit cards again. You know, if you use the home equity to pay off the credit cards, you need to really be disciplined going forward to make sure that you don't get into a situation where you're accumulating more debt. Absolutely, Laura. And so that kind of brings me up to step six. 
you know, if you're struggling to keep up with your minimum monthly payments and you're looking at these options and you don't think any of them are for you, we really encourage people to look into credit counseling, reaching out to nonprofits like the National Foundation for Credit Counseling could really help people talk to trained debt counselors who can help negotiate lower rates for them, consolidate their debt, or even give just some extra guidance. Yeah, that's great advice. Let's go back to the balance transfer cards. Mary, if if you're looking and shopping for a transfer card right now, what are some things that you should be looking for? And should you just go with a card that you've already got? Or does it make sense to apply for a new card? Yeah, if I was looking for a balance transfer credit card, I would look for a great intro offer like we talked about, uh, no annual fees, and a lower or no transfer fee on that balance transfer. The best balance transfer credit cards may have a low intro APR offer for that set time period that we talked about, which when we mentioned earlier, it allows you to spread out your repayment over months without the threat of those high interest charges. Um, However, like I mentioned before, the introductory offer won't last forever. So make sure you keep an eye on that because, um, you know, the interest rates afterwards, like you mentioned, jump up to a variable rate. Uh, Also, another thing that I like to mention is people should also keep an eye on that balance transfer fee. It can amount to anywhere from 3% to 5% of that balance transfer amount. Yeah, so that is kind of the cost of using a balance transfer card. You know, in some cases, I've seen 0% transfer fees, but that's very rare. So you typically do have to to pay that. But if you weigh that against your interest savings over those 18 months or whatever that promotional period is, in most cases, you're still going to come out ahead. That is just something to consider. You you are going to have to sort of subtract that, that transaction fee out of your your math when you're thinking about uh, doing this and what the potential savings are. Yeah, absolutely. And you asked also about whether or not you should use an existing card to transfer or uh, open a new card. And I think it, it can be tricky. It kind of depends. So balance transfers could be done with an existing transfer offer. But if that existing card already has a balance, then the transfer will only increase your credit card balance and the debt that you have on that one. Keep in mind also that your payments toward the card will go to the existing balance first and not the balance that you transferred. Yeah, that's a great point, Mary. Um, that is something to consider is that in, in what order will the, you know, the payments that you send, how th- will they be applied? Tell me a little bit about what credit card issuers are thinking about. Like if you're applying for a balance transfer card, how is an issuer going to evaluate you? You know, do you need excellent credit? Do you need to prove great income? What are the factors that they want to see? Yeah, issuers are typically reviewing things like your credit history, your credit score, your income and monthly housing payments, and any of your existing debts. Yeah, so really just depending on your current financial situation, you may or may not get approved. If you're looking for a new card, you are, you know, you are going to have to have the re- the minimum requirements to get approved. So if you already have a card, you know, that may be something that you want to consider if you're struggling with your credit or income right now and feel like you could not get approved for a new card. Tell me a little bit about you know, the end of the promotion. So let's say we've applied, we've gone to Citizens, we've gotten a new card, we're, we've transferred a balance, we've been able to save money. When that promotional period expires at the end of 18 months, what happens then? After that promotional period ends, it really means that you can no longer take advantage of that low intro APR offer that we talked about before. So really pay attention to your interest rates afterwards. They can jump considerably, and especially with the market, like you mentioned, with rates on the rise, it could really add to your credit card debt. Uh, And also keep in mind that uh, the interest rate will now be variable. You do want to 
understand what the interest rate will be when the promotion ends. So maybe that should be something people are kind of looking at when they're shopping around and looking for a card, kind of comparing what what's going to happen after this promotion expires. And, you know, in the best case scenario, you've paid off your debt by the end of the promotional period, but that may not happen for everyone. You may still have a, a partial balance. So that balance then is going to be treated just like kind of a regular balance, right? So you, it's going to have a, mm-hmm. a regular variable APR, again, that is going to change based on what's going on in the economy and, and going on with interest rates. So yes, this is definitely a pretty cool tool when you think about it. It's um, a balance transfer is something that you may not want to do many, many, many times in your life. You know, there there may be situations where you feel like, hey, I've I've found a great offer and it makes sense to transfer high interest debt to a low interest balance uh, transfer card and, and just take advantage of that promotion, especially if the promotional period is a long one. You know, I think the longer the term, the, the better for you because you're going to have more time to take advantage of it versus it just being a couple of months. So it really is a great tool, but I do think you have to be serious about tackling your debt while you're taking advantage of the promotion. Um, Because as you said, kind of just goes back to a regular old credit card after the promotion ends. Talk to me, Mary, about credit. I know this is a question I get a lot from listeners who are wondering if they should apply for a balance transfer offer. They're wondering, what is this going to do to my credit? Am I going to kind of be shooting myself in the foot if I apply for a credit card? And, you know, maybe I'm already struggling with credit. Is this going to set me back? Is this going to hurt my credit? Laura, that's actually a really great question. I get that all the time as well. So I try and remind people that actually your credit score is not impacted by the physical balance transfer, but it could change based on what happens before and after. For example, the issuer of a balance transfer credit card will do an inquiry onto your credit, which could cause your score to dip slightly, but that could be temporary. So unless you have four or five inquiries from the previous 12 months, um, the effect should only be minimal and, like I mentioned, temporary too. Uh, And even though your balance transfer credit card could have a low intro APR, you'll still have to make your minimum payments. So one or multiple missed payments could negatively impact your credit score as well. Yeah. So you do have a little bit of a ding to your credit when you apply for a new credit account. And um, as Mary mentioned, that's probably quite temporary. You know, it, it, it may not have much of an effect on your credit and unless you have had lots and lots of inquiries. And yes, as long as you handle that card responsibly, that should help your credit, right? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So if you're not missing payments, you know, you're making everything on time. Um, having that additional credit account actually helps you prove that that you are responsible with credit and that will cause your score to increase. So yeah, it, it could be positive net effect. You know, maybe worst case, maybe it's a wash um, as long as you are handling the card uh, responsibly and paying on time. Mary, what else should people think about as they're really working to get out of credit card debt and and thinking about trying to eliminate as much as possible in the light of rising interest rates right now? I guess the last piece of advice that I would add is kind of general advice that I would give anyone when they're trying to save or uh, think about their future life goals. So every penny counts. Always look for opportunities to save a penny here and there and any additional savings you can put towards your debts. will really help. And I I know it can be tough to think about cutting back on some things, but maybe there's things like instead of eating out or doing takeout uh, a couple nights a week, you cut it down to one, put that savings from not going out that second night towards that debt. And the little things will really make a big difference over time. It's so true. You know, I remember when I was just starting out and and really struggling with some debt that I had accumulated, my husband and I really just made a commitment to each other that we were going to cut back everything we could. We were going to save every way possible and just funnel all of that extra money toward our debt. And I think within about a year and a half, we had it all paid off. And I remember 
how good that felt. I mean, it just was, you know, an amazing feeling to be like, we did it. We made some sacrifices, but we didn't have to make those sacrifices forever. And so I think if you can keep that in mind, you can remember that you can do anything for a few months or even, you know, a year. You can really just buckle down. And um, I know it's difficult. Make some difficult choices and sacrifices. It will pay off. And it will really make you feel fantastic when you're not putting all of your money toward your debt every month. And then it frees you up to do other things like beef up your emergency fund or put more money toward your retirement savings. You know, you'll have all of that extra money to go toward the other goals that you may have in in life. It doesn't mean that you stop using credit cards, but it means that you really make a commitment to only charge what you can pay off in full each month. If you can do that, you are really getting the best out of your card because you're not having to pay any interest. You're getting all these great benefits and conveniences from the card, but you're not having to pay anything for it. So when you get to that point in life, it makes you feel pretty darn good and um, can tell you as somebody who has paid off credit cards in full for decades, it's just sort of the way I live. I will not make a charge if I don't know for sure that I can 100% pay it off at the end of the month. It's just kind of a mindset shift, I think, in the way that you use cards, you know, take a little bit of a different uh, approach to them um, and almost almost use them like a debit card, you know, kind of pretend like they're a debit card when they're really a credit card. If you can do that and make sure that you can always cover those charges, you'll be able to pay them off in full. And that does such incredible things to your credit score too, uh, when you keep a really low utilization rate. And then as your credit score builds, you find that Wow, you're saving money. If you do need a car loan or you do need a home loan, having that great credit is going to save you tons of money on any future loans and borrowing that you may need to do. You've brought up so many great points, Laura. I I handle my credit card actually similarly to you where I pay it off every month and and keep in mind, you know, my budget and what I can spend each month and I'm just hoping that we can help others get to that point as well. <laughs> We're all at a different place with debt in our finances. I think the idea is really just to inspire people that, you know, it is possible to to the, get to the point where you can pay it off and live, a, you know, maybe not a completely debt-free life. You know, I've got a car loan. I have, you know, other debt in my life, but I've definitely not let credit cards rule my life. I try to rule my credit cards um, instead. And so I think that's what we need to do is feel like we're in control of, of our financial tools. And that's what a credit card is. It is a tool that you can use for your financial life. And if you're in control of it, then you've got the power. If you let it control you and you let it cost you a lot of money and interest, um, it's just going to cause your overall financial life to suffer. So the idea here is to acknowledge what you've got really make a plan. Think about ways that you can either consolidate the debt, use a balance transfer offer, make some sacrifices to pay it down. Really just thinking about a plan. And as you mentioned, Mary, tackling them from the highest interest rate down to the lowest interest rate is usually the smartest way to go. Now, if you've got a little tiny debt that's a low interest rate that you just want to knock out, you know, on one of your cards, I'd say go for it if that will give you a feeling of accomplishment. But in general, tackling high to low interest rates is what's going to save you the most. So that's why Mary and I are are recommending that. Mary, anything else you think listeners should know um, before we wrap up? Definitely go to citizensbank.com slash moneygirl. All right. I appreciate that so much. And again, Mary, thank you so much for coming on the show. (laughs) Thank you, Laura. A big thanks to Mary for a great interview. Kelly, I hope this helps you understand more about the pros and cons of using a balance transfer card. The bottom line is that if you can make a plan to pay off all or most of your balance before a transfer card's promotion ends, it can save you a significant amount of interest. Just be sure to shop around for the longest promotional period, the lowest transfer fees, and the lowest interest rate that will apply after the promotion expires. 
And before we go, I want to invite you to connect with me on Twitter at Laura Adams or again on Instagram at Laura D. Adams. And I hope you'll visit lauradadams.com. That's my personal site where you can use my contact page and learn more about my work, books, and money courses. That's all for now. I'll talk to you next week. Until then, here's to living a richer life. Money Girl is a quick and dirty tips podcast. It's audio engineered by Steve Rickyberg with editing by Adam Cecil. Our advertising operations specialist is Morgan Christensen. Our digital operations specialist is Holly Hutchins. Our marketing and publicity assistant is Davina Tomlin. And our intern is Brendan Pika. Citizens is a brand name of Citizens Bank N.A. Views expressed may not necessarily reflect those of citizens. The information contained herein is for informational purposes only, as a service to the public and is not legal advice or a substitute for legal counsel, nor does it constitute advertising or solicitation. You should do your own research and or contact your own legal or tax advisor for assistance with questions you may have on your information contained herein. Visit citizensbank.com slash moneygirl. MasterCard is a registered trademark of MasterCard International Incorporated, member